Hey guys, what's going on? Jude the Nomadic Net Hunter here with Alex from Mushroom Revival. Just here to up in Massachusetts, basically answered an Instagram, and this is amazing. <laughs> it's insane what this guy and his team has done. I am so happy to be like helping out and learning more from what he's got and everybody that also works here. Most beautiful thing I've ever seen, to be honest with you. Um, Alex? It's, it's been great having you. It's been awesome. Um, you know, we have a lot of volunteers come through and it's really awesome to meet people that are as jazz as I am, you know, and, and our team and, and, you know, we have some people come in and they're like, okay, yeah, and then some people are just blown away and fall in love and it, it's really great to share, you know, that mushroom passion and that mushroom love and, um, yeah, to show to show how it how it all goes down at, at Mushroom Revival. Yeah, I definitely love to like it's so welcoming to come in here, and it wasn't like there was not a step missed. I felt it was just like, hey, let's go check this out. The company is all about transparency, and that's why this video we're gonna show basically we're gonna put on all of our Tyvek suit. We're gonna go right in front of the flow hood and basically show real quick how to go from. What, wild harvest scores to the whole thing? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so um, we partner with a lot of foragers um, who go out in the wild around the United States, typically in the East Coast. Um, and they find Cordyceps militaris in the wild growing on moth larvae in the Lepidoptera family. Um, and they'll clone it in the lab and get the, the DNA culture on a petri plate. Um, and send it to us to, to grow out. So we'll get this culture, we'll grow it out, um, and once we grow it out, we'll, we'll take a spore print. Um, so we're getting new genetics, new seeds, we're seed saving um, for mushrooms. So uh, Cordyceps and Militaris have, has these little bumps on the side of the mushroom, and these are called parathesium. They hold the spores in a, in a sack um, called a parathesium and we can, we can scrape off those bumps on the cordyceps and put them on an agar dish. An agar dish is just a nutrient dish where we can get the mycelium or the roots and these, these small spores are just going to land right on this nutrient dish. And we can close the dish. So once this grows out, we can see this white mycelium start to form. And from this white mycelium, we can take from this dish, still in a sterile environment, and put it in something called a liquid culture. This is just honey water, and you can see the three-dimensional mycelium growing out on this honey, the sterile honey water. Um, and then we'll take a syringe gun. So this tube, everything is sterile. We put we put it into this jar, um, and with a syringe, we can stick it through this jar filled with rice um, with a nutrient substrate, and inject the mycelium or the roots of the mushroom into this substrate jar. Now, in the wild, I was talking about how cordyceps grow on bugs. Um, we grow it on a nutrient rice supplement. It's all vegan. Um, we know people don't want to eat bugs, so that's what we do at our farm at Mushroom Revival. And after a couple weeks, the mycelium starts to grow out, and you can see the color change um, from this brown, you know, kind of darker color rice to all white colonized substrate. Kind of like tempting. So like we go from the lab. This is what room is this room? This is the incubation room. Incubation. So we have a light on now, but usually this is dark. Mm -hmm. um, and once these jars are inoculated with the mycelium, um, it takes two weeks from this jar from just you know sterile rice um, to fully colonize mycelium. And the cordyceps my mycelium loves to be in the dark during that you know growth cycle, but once they're ready to fruit, they love the light. And then we're gonna go over to the, the fruiting room. room. Yeah, spaceship. <laughs> a lot of people 
we'll call this the spaceship because we have uh, reflective mylar and crazy lights. Um, and the cordyceps look pretty alien as well. But, yep, they stay in here for about uh, two months or so. After a month, they start um, growing these little pins, these little baby mushrooms. And it's ready to harvest when they're about this big um, or a little bit bigger. And we can see the little bumps, kind of like Cheeto dust. Um, and they're called parathesium, and that's where they But most the people on the market are just selling the mycelium. They're just selling, you know, the roots of the mushroom on rice. And most of the product is just rice. Oh, wow. Um, so it's like a filler. It's just a filler. Yeah, it's really watered down. We just use the fruit bodies. Um, that's where a lot of the medicinal compounds are held. And so it's a, it's a much purer product, and you're getting a lot more bang for your buck. And we know what this, you know, is there like an active ingredient that's also inside of the core set that's like what we're looking for? Right, there's a few, and the main one is called cordycepin. Okay. Um, that's where a lot of the main studies um, have targeted um, is cordycepin, and it's shared between both the cordyceps militaris and the cordyceps sinescens. Um, so it's perfect that we can grow this one, um, even though the other one is rarer and more expensive. Um, we can get the same medicinal benefits, such as energy, um, stamina, sexual performance, athletic performance, lung capacity, oxygen in the bloodstream, things like that. Sounds really good. Now, from here, you're, you're going to do everything with the harvesting that we can show, um, and then you dehydrate them for yep. a little bit of time, and then after that, it's either going to be just raw, dried mushroom, fruiting bodies packaged, yep. and then you also make tinctures? Yep. Okay. So for the, the raw, dried mushrooms, um, people love making a tea out of them. I personally love it every day. Delicious. Um, <laughs> you can do it straight up or add you know, some lemon, some ginger. A lot of people put some lavender, some rose in it um, to add some more flavor profiles onto it. Um, the lemon actually helps extract it as well. Um, and our tincture is both um, it extracts both the alcohol soluble compounds and the hot water soluble compounds. So it's more of a full spectrum product. All right, awesome. And then, I mean, you, you're mushroomrevival.com, is it? Yep, mushroom-revival.com. Dash Revival, okay. Yeah. And then you also have, not just the core steps, but you also have like, other tinctures that we've been working on, yep. like chamomile and like turkey tail and lion's mane and yep. a bunch of other ones. Yep. Awesome. So we work, we work with about 10 different medicinal mushrooms. We source them um, from sister farms that are certified organic, lab tested, um, best of the best. And then we work with some other herbs as well to make some full spectrum holistic formulas. And those are also as, you know, as well certified organic, third party tested, um, trying to make you know, as holistic products yeah. as possible to target you know, what people want to work on. Yeah, that sounds perfect. So stay tuned, stay shroom. Um, thanks for coming in, man. It's yeah, been awesome. Good, man. I really do. I'm gonna just put, I'll, there's so many links. He also has like his own channel too that goes over this like more in depth because I was only here for a short time at the moment. So I'm just gonna try to throw that all there either in the comments or on the link, you know, over here. And, uh, you know, check it out. I mean, this stuff's, amazing and especially all these other tinctures that he's got and some of them have been made you know you know we put some love into it so it's all good man <laughs> it's all love yeah. all right well check it out it's like subscribe if you have any comments just throw them there below and everything else have a great day remember together we can grow a better future have a good one awesome dude <laughs>